The Suez Canal is one of man's most impressive inventions. The 193 km canal runs through Egypt and has been pivotal in dramatically shortening the shipping route between Europe and Asia because ships can travel through Africa instead of around it. In today's advanced world it's almost hard to believe that humans completed the massive canal without modern technology. Construction of the Suez Canal began way back in 1859 and would take a whole 10 years to complete, eventually opening for international use in 1869. The original planning of the canal started in 1854. It began when the former French diplomat Ferdinand de Lesseps negotiated a deal with the Egyptian Viceroy Said Pasha to start the Suez Canal Company. Initially, the British Empire were against the canal's construction due to political tension with France who were in favour of the project. However, Britain came on board when they, like France, realised the canal would majorly shorten shipping to their Asian colonies. Although the idea seemed simple enough, building the massive canal was a problematic experience. Initially, the workers used to build the canal were Egyptian peasants who were given no other choice but to work. They dug the canal slowly with picks and baskets. The extremely hot climate of Egypt made the work extremely tough, which only slowed the workers down even more. Fortunately, in 1863, forced labour was outlawed and Europeans with steam-powered shovels and dredges had to be brought in to finish the mammoth task. They were not helped by an outbreak of cholera in 1865. When the canal finally opened in 1869, it was deemed property of Egypt and France, the two countries with majority shares in the Suez Canal Company. In 1875 though, Egypt sold its shares to the British, giving them ownership of the canal. Despite the British and French ownership, the canal was always supposed to serve any international vessel who wished to use it, whether it was during peace or wartime. This strict rule was laid out in the 1888 Constantinople Convention. The convention was not always followed though. For example, both Germany and Israel were unable to use the canal at points in the 1940s. Britain and France would continue to own the canal until 1956 when Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser nationalised the canal in a show of Egyptian strength. Although it sparked a brief war between Egypt, Britain, France and Israel, the canal's ultimate control would remain with Egypt. Today it is operated through the Suez Canal Authority and is open for use from all countries. Apart from a brief closure of the canal between 1967 and 1975, when sunken ships from the Six Day War blocked the narrow entrance, the canal has always been readily available to shorten the trade route from Europe to Asia. In fact, shortening that very shipping route was the only reason the canal was conceptualised in the first place. Its very creation has helped link the markets of Europe and Asia closer than the humans of 1854 could have ever believed. And without the canal to revolutionise world shipping, the world that we know today would be hugely different.